Hi guys, we're recording. Hope you're okay. Yeah. And uh, it's Manchester Street Preachers were coming out today, and we're just about to go out. And uh, I just want to ask the guys some questions, and if we could start from senior to younger. Uh, the Word of God uh, is the Bible the Word of God? Would you like to answer, bro? The Bible is the, the Word of God, and we got so many manuscripts all saying the same thing, four and a half thousand documents of the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, all saying the same thing about Jesus. The Old Testament is all about Jesus. Um, and it's God's word, it's a, it's a book of um, how God treated men down to history. And although not every word in the Bible is God's word, it's the word of fishermen and the word of uh, kings, it's the words of, of the devil even. But it's, uh, it's, it's God's word in that the message in it is the same all through, that he was going to send a saviour and that would save his people from their sins. And that is Jesus. When John the Baptist saw Jesus, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And we have found in Christ our salvation. Uh, we, we have asked him to come into our lives, be Lord of our lives. And uh, we're born again of his Holy Spirit. And that's why we're out here. We've got to tell people. Uh, we're like beggars who have found bread. And we've got to tell people where, where to find this bread. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Uh, and we know full well for the joy that's in us, the experience we have with God. And just looking at nature, there is a God who is beautiful, wonderful. He's made us for his glory. And that's why we're here today, to tell everybody about the glory of God and that that we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God and mm. that everybody needs to repent and come to Jesus, have the sins forgiven and, and, and know that peace that Jesus said, the peace that surpasses all understanding I give to you and we have that. We're born again in the Holy Spirit. God is our Father and we love him and we're here to glorify his name today um, and it's, uh, it's an absolute honor to be, with these, to be with Jay on the camera and this is Michael who's going to speak right now. Amen. The word the Bible says the flower may fade, but the word of our Lord stands forever. Amen. Amen. The Bible has been scrutinized, it's been looked at, it's been put under the microscope, and every word in it is flawless. The Bible says my word is flawless. Everything that's in the Bible has been proven, it's been tested. As Kieran mentioned, we do have thousands and thousands of manuscripts. When we get all these manuscripts and we put them all together, they match the Bible that we have today. And it says the same message. We're all sinners and we all fall short of the glory of God. And we need a saviour. We cannot make it to heaven on our own. We need Jesus Christ. We need his love. We need his peace. And we need his mercy. And we need to share this good news with people who don't yet know Jesus Christ. We're only focused on what this world can offer. But we know there's a better world, there's a better way. Mm. And we want to proclaim that good news today. We want to reach Damn. people who are broken. We want to reach people who are living a life of misery, living in drugs, prostitution, all those things that are not of God. Lord. We're here today to, to um, be used as vessels as your Holy Spirit, Lord. Amen. The Bible to me is a supernatural book. It speaks to your heart. It's not like any other book that you read. It's not like a novel that you read. It actually speaks to your heart. It convicts you. And it wants you to live a better life. And it's the truth of God. It's God's truth. Amen. And it's going to stand forever. And we stand on that book. What if you, what, guys, just one last question, like, what, what if some young people said, uh, there's faults in the Bible, Kieran, and the Bible's not relevant, it's not culturally relevant, and it's got faults in, and maybe you're a Christ, there's a Christian in church, and they've taken that line, and they're beginning to think, oh, the Bible's got faults in it, and they're beginning to, like, live the way they want to live, and they're beginning to think, well, it's not culturally relevant, so... They're changing the Bible to fit their beliefs now. What would you say to a young person who's thinking like that, Kieran? Well, <clears throat> many people take the Bible and say it's, it's, um, it's, uh, it's, uh, it says something. But the, 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 the problem is they take it out of context. 
And when you take the Bible in context, uh, as, as we have done, as many have done over the years, over 2,000 years, the Bible has been torn apart, tested, upside down, inside out, and the ones who come up with this thing that there are, uh, there are, there are flaws in the Bible, uh, there might be some numerical things that we don't understand, like maybe 40,000 uh, chariots in the Old Testament, and another chapter says 4,000. But uh, even when you study into things like that, it'll say that uh, one was at the beginning of the count and one was at the end, maybe 10 years later. Um, so everything has got to be taken in context. Uh, and even if you Google everything and say, and say what is the meaning of this? Uh, if Jesus says, pluck your eye out if it causes you to sin, I mean, that's yeah. obviously the context is, uh, is, is to cut out the sin in your life, not to pull your eye out. But he's using a metaphor there. So many people use that as saying the Bible is wrong, the Bible is this, the Bible is that. Uh, and when you take, you've got to take, when you read any book, you've got to take it in context. If you take anything out of context, uh, it's it's going to look it's going to look bad. Mm. Um, so uh, <clears throat> I would say to any young people, um, ask, find out, like you're supposed to do. God's given you a brain. Find out the context of what's being said and don't just mm, take it yeah. well, one liner. Because if, if I took a one liner, what you said, or, or, or anybody takes a one liner, it makes people look daft and stupid. Mm. So you got to look at the context of what, what everything is in. Mm. And and like I said, the Bible is being looked at, it's being studied, etc. etc. And when, when the, the real meaning is brought out, and all you got to do is Google it, say, so What is the meaning of <coughs> a certain verse? Uh, when Jesus says, unless you hate your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, more than you love me, uh, people say, oh, you're going to hate your mother. That's not what it's saying. It's obviously Jesus who, who loved everybody, who gave his life for people. Mm -hmm. It would insist that uh, to be his disciple, you would have to let him wash your feet. It's not saying uh, that you're going to hate your mother. Because you, you, the Bible says you must honor your mother and your father. So what he's saying is, is he's saying in comparison to your love for your mom, mm -hmm. your love for God should be greater because God mm -hmm. has given you your, Amen. And your father. So it's quite simple. And everything is to do with context. And that's the way I would say it to young people. And I think young people are a lot more, they've got a lot more, you know, nous about them when they actually study into things. They can understand. It's just that somebody has said to them, oh, the Bible says this. And they run with it, but please, please, look at everything in context. Mm -hmm. Come up, the Bible, like Mike said, it, it speaks to your heart, the Bible. And it will speak to your heart, and it will, it will give you great understanding and wisdom. That's what the Bible says. It says, uh, if you search uh, for, for God and seek after God, as you would for looking for silver or gold, uh, you will find that the knowledge of God and the fear of the Lord, you will understand what it is to know God. It's not that he's, he terrorize you, mm. but how awesome he is that we should serve him because mm. he has made us, he's given, given us everything. He's given us our bodies, our eyesight, our brains, everything he's given us. All medical science has given us because he's given man a brain to figure the whole thing out. So, uh, yeah, I would urge you to look at everything in context. <laughs> if you go to somebody who you consider to be a, a good Christian, you can see the fruit of his life is love, patience, peace, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, self-control. If you see that in a Christian, go to that Christian and ask him, what does that mean? Don't go to a Muslim, because he's going to give you out of context. Mm. Go to somebody who has a bias towards the Word of God, and they will tell you that it's, it's wrong. All right, look at the good Christians. Go to them, go to here. And go to Google, check it. We've got so much information, check it all out and see it in context. And if it's not, find out what the context is and you'll be all the ways up for it. God bless you guys out there. Thank you. And any thought, Mike? Yeah, yeah. The, um, the good news in the Bible is that we have an unchanging God. His nature doesn't change, his word doesn't change. And even though you say culture, it doesn't fit in with what culture says kingdom of heaven is always going to be in reverse to what's going on in earth because God is, he says in the Bible my ways are higher than yours and my thoughts are not your thoughts and my word stands forever 
So I urge young people not to attack the Bible, but to study the Bible and understand it and let the Holy Spirit come into your heart and to guide you. Because when you're at college and you're studying, you don't read your, you don't study maths out of context, or you don't study William Shakespeare out of context, you read some of his words and go, oh, well, that was a load of rubbish, or that doesn't make any sense, that doesn't fit in. Mm. If you understand the culture at the time, the time of Jesus, the time of the Old Testament, it applies to this culture and it's going to apply to the next culture and to the next generation. The next generation, it's for all generations mm. and it's relevant for today. I urge Amen. you to study the Bible, to know who Jesus Christ is, understand his love, his peace, his, his mercy, his forgiveness, and know that you can have a home in heaven if you just put your trust in Jesus Christ and you study God's word. Because God's word is the only book that you're ever going to need in this life. Bible Amen. means book intended before leaving earth. I, I, I urge you to read that book so that you can have a home in heaven. And Amen. Come into the presence of God. Because we do have an enemy in this world and he will teach you that the word of God is irrelevant. He'll say the word of God isn't irrelevant, it, it's rubbish, but it's not rubbish. It's truth, it's spiritual truth. Mm. And you need to feed your soul with that word. Mm. You need to study it. Don't attack it and say culture is says it's not right. But listen to what God says, not what man says. Amen. And you'll be guided into the right way. Amen. Can Amen. I can I just say one more thing? Yeah. <clears throat> one, one or two things is uh, Jesus never ever questioned the word of God. When the devil attacked him, he quoted the word of God. Number two, if you look at all the scholars that depart from the word of God, they become secularized. The seminaries become secularized. Churches become secularized. So the moment you start to tamper with the word of God, you start to become secular. And number three, the word of God is indestructible. When you look at Chairman Mao, he had a day of burning in China and burnt all the Bibles. But now there are 70 million Christians in China. The right. word of God cannot be destroyed. It's life, it's power, and it will bless you. So study it and make yourself approved in ministry and in life, and it will equip you in all that you need for life and godliness. Thank you. Amen. Stop it. Yeah.